He asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist, some say Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But of whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter, okay, answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto you, but my Father which is heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, you no longer Simon Barjona, thou art Peter, and upon this rock, which that's the whole reason why I'm reading this, upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Where, what's he talking about? What rock is he building it on? Peter? What's the rock that he's, Jesus is saying, upon this, I'm going to build my church? What he's talking about is the faith that Peter had. Upon this faith, upon this confession that you just made, that's true, that because of that faith, I'm going to build my church. And the gates a hell shall not prevail again. Upon that rock. So when we go back here, consider the rock which you will cut from in the quarry. Consider, remember what I did. See, I want you to have the faith that Abraham had. Okay? You're going you're gonna to need to believe that I am what I am. Moses was saying, well, you know, when he told me to go back to Egypt, he says, well, who shall I say sent me? You know, they don't want to know who said. He says, I am that I am. He is the only all existent. He is who he is. So this is the God we serve that when we see things that are impossible, bondage that we see we can't break through, it looks impossible to us, but to God all things are possible. Now we say that as a cute, uh, 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 how do you say it again? Cliche, yeah. We say that's cliche. But the reality is, sometimes we got to remember what God has done. Because if we remember what God has done, even in our own lives, when we face the impossibilities again, we know that God did it then, He can do it again. And, and that rock, your faith, stronger. Because God said He can do it, but He's trying to show you to believe him. So in this thing, he's telling them, I need you to believe me. Thank you, your aunt, Abraham, your ancestor, who gave birth to the nation. Abraham was but one man, and I called him, but I blessed him. And he became a great nation. Now, in our book here, I highlighted this. These words were encouraging for those who struggled with wondering not if God was willing to deliver them, but if the Lord was capable of doing it. These people had experienced military defeat at the hands of campus enemies. They knew in their hearts of hearts that they were guilty of not keeping the covenant. They remembered the times that they worshiped other gods and didn't care for God who freed them from Egypt and protected their ancestors. Some even scoffed at their traditions. Some ignored their heritage. So they thought, why would God save us? Why would God return to us? Why would God rescue us in light of everything we've done against him? You know, the way they felt is real. Because they started realizing their sins, all that they've done wrong. So why would God bother with them anymore? Right? We ain't always done right. And you know, sometimes when we do wrong, we know we're doing wrong. But we don't care because we feel like whatever we're doing, we're doing it. Because we're going to do it. 
And if we start thinking about that, you can see why maybe God would give up on you. I, I'm coming from one problem to another problem. I, I, I know because I, I, I just I just been doing everything God says not do. He is right to abandon me. And you know what? You can get to an eye to a point where you really believe that. And so the thing is, it says, it's a wonderful blessing to know that God is a forgiving God. No matter what you have done, God is still a forgiving God. You can still get in the right relationship with him by repenting, and God will forgive you. Now, even though you wouldn't forgive someone, God will. So it's so good to know that God will forgive no matter what you've done, God will forgive you. So when you get in this bondage situation, when you get in a spot where you don't think God can get you out, you can get to the point where you think, well, God don't need to get me out because I'm that bad. There's people right, right now walking around believing that. But remember who God is talking to. He's talking to those that seek after him. Okay? Now, he is able to forgive and restore them. He is able to forgive and restore when he pleases. It took 70 years for God to bring them out of bondage. But he had a reason why they had to be there 70 years. Okay, let's go to three. Now, for the Lord shall comfort Zion. He shall comfort all her waste places. He will make a wilderness like Eden and a desert like the garden and of, of the Lord. And the gladness shall be found there in thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Now, he's telling the people, when, when I do deliver you and take you back to your land, you already heard what the land looked like. Ain't nobody been there for seven years. The weeds are all grown. The animals are all there. There's nothing there. It's destroyed. But the Lord said, I'm going, he, he's comforting his people of Zion. He said, I'm going to make her waste places, the places that are wastelands. He said, I will, I, in the wilderness, I'm going to make it look like the Garden of Eden. The Lord's going to restore what was lost. Now, because they're sitting there, even if we do get free, how can we fix back up the land? We ain't got nothing. We ain't got no money. We ain't got no army. We ain't got nothing. How can we do it? Lord said, Lord says, I will. I will fix the waste places. I will fix the wilderness. He says, and here's another thing he's going to do. Joy and gladness will be found in it. Not only am I going to fix the physical part of the thing, you're going to find joy and gladness in there. Wow. Does sound like a good place? Huh? Sound like a good place? And, 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 and wait, and they're in Thanksgiving. And the voice of melody. Remember the priest said, how can I sing a song in a strange land? You can be able to sing back in your land. Joy's going to be there. Melody. So the Babylonians, when they look, they see what God is saying. They're going to restore this desolate place. Right? But now I'm talking to you, the church, today. This same thing holds for you. The Lord's speaking to something in the future to you. Because you look at the world today, we in all kinds of heck. You can't even sit, you can't even sit on your porch and a bullet might hit you. You can't even go to the grocery store, somebody going to carjack a car. We live in a, in a land full of evil. We live, it, it looks like evil is everywhere and ain't no godly people anywhere. But the remnant of you guys, all of you guys that seek after God, God said, not only will I free you from your bondage, but I'm going to return you to a place where the wasteland, all this terrible stuff, 
ain't going to be no more. It's going to be peace, joy, harmony. And, you, and you're going to say, well, where is this at? <laughs> right? Where is this at? But if you read your Bible, it's in your Bible. There's going to come a time when Jesus comes back, and there's going to be a time when there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and it's going to be like what he just said. So when Isaiah was talking and saying this by, the, by what God told him, he was speaking. The Babylonians heard them speak to them. The Israelites heard them speak to them in Babylon. But if you listen today, you can hear God speaking to you for what your future is. There's hope. The same hope they got from there is the same hope you should get. Because there's going to be a time. Now, the Lord will, we might four. Listen to me, or hearken unto me. Here he goes again. All right? Listen. Who should be listening? People. My people. Okay? Now, when the Israelites are reading this in Babylon, my people means them. Right? So he says, listen, my people. Hear me, Israel. Okay? For my law will be proclaimed, and my justice will become a light to the nation. Wow. So, he's telling the Israelites that when they're going back to their land, that my people, they're his people, he says, my law will be proclaimed. Well, what's his law? What's God's law? Matthew, Mark, the New Testament, the gospel. My law will be proclaimed. My justice will become a light to the nations. You know, when we read the New Testament, when we read the gospel, the gospel is about salvation. The, the gospel is about God's people who are born again, right? All of you guys that are here that are born again are now are God's people. When the Israelites read it, he said, my people... Israel, they were listening to God speak to them about their situation. But today when you read it, my people hear me, Israel, you are God's people now. And he says, for my law will be proclaimed and my justice will become a light to the nation. Well, his law is going to be proclaimed when Jesus comes. Right? Because that's when the gospel begins. Right? After, after he dies for our sin becomes the gospel where you can be born again, where you can be saved, where, you can, where your sins can be erased, covered by the blood of Jesus, where you can be set free from your bondage, right? There's going to be that time when God's law is pro proclaimed and, and, and his justice, God's justice, not man's justice, will be a light to the nation. CSA nations, to the rest of the world. Now, this one in the beginning was just saying Israel. But at the end of the sentence, it's talking about when this, when the, when this uh, gospel is proclaimed, when the law is proclaimed, it's going to be a light for the rest of the world. So now, not only are Israel's included as God's people, but all those that seek after the Lord, you and I, who now by blood are Israelites, are all by, by, by faith, are children of God. Right? We are heirs to the king. We are his people. Right? Okay. Good news. So now, five says, listen to this. My mercy or my righteousness is near. My salvation is born forth. This one says, my mercy and justice are coming, coming soon. My salvation is on the way. Now, what is that talking about? His mercy and justice is coming. Salvation is on the way. He's talking about a future time to them, which is a time when Christ comes. Christ will be coming with salvation and righteousness. He's going to be coming bringing that to the world, bringing that to them. 
He says, he said, and my arm shall judge the people. God's arm that strengthens his power. His power was just people. Not me or you. God. And the island, the isle shall wait upon me, and on my arm shall they trust. The rest of the world, the Gentiles, they going after the, after the light has been there, they also going to be looking to me and wait for the hope that, that's in the good news. Okay? So, Isaiah is not talking way, way in the future about when Christ comes, when the whole world can become children of God by faith in, in Christ Jesus, the work that he's done. Now, number six. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke and, uh, and the earth shall wax old like a garment. He, said, he tells them, look up. Look at the heavens. Go outside, look up. Look at the sun, look at the clouds, the moon, the stars. Look up. And look down at the earth. Now these are some things we see as constant. You know, I can be sure that the sun is going to rise in the east and set in the west. I can be sure that after summer, fall is going to come. After fall, winter. These kind of things we pretty much can be sure of, right? Uh, they're kind of like uh, things we can depend on that we know is, is true. But God says, for the heavens shall vanish away like smoke. One day, the heaven, with them stars up over there, going to vanish away like smoke. And the earth shall wax old like a garden. What? And they that dwell therein shall die just like that. What? God is saying these things that you look at and you're dependent on, part of my creation that you see there, all God's creation has a purpose. There's going to be a time when God is going to get rid of this earth and that heaven. And all those that's in there, there's going to be a time all that's going to go. That ain't where you should be dependent on. That's not what your faith should be on, right? Why? Because it says, but my salvation going to last forever. That salvation that you have, it's going to last forever. Past, past when the earth and the heavens are gone. His salvation is going to last. And guess what? Not only salvation, but his word. His word is going to last. My righteousness rule will never end. There's going to be a time, and Isaiah is telling us, he's telling them back then, but he's telling us, we haven't got to that point yet. We live in a world where we're fighting over Supreme Court decisions and all kinds of stuff like that. That's man's law. But there's going to be a time when God's law is going to rule. And there's going to be a time when all this wickedness all, all the stuff that goes on that's ungodly, all of that is going to cease. God's going to take away the heavens, and he's going to take away the earth, and everything that's in there. Well, if he does that to, uh, in a few minutes, we ain't here, right? <laughs> no, but, you, but those that have my salvation are going to last forever. My righteous work, rule will never end. So, oh my goodness. Uh, number seven says this. Listen to me. Hearken again. Three times he wanted you to listen. Ye that know righteousness, the people who hearts is my law, fear ye not the reproach of men, neither be afraid of their reviling. Listen to me, you who know right from wrong. You who cherish my law in your hearts. Do not be afraid of people scorn nor fear their insults. Because there's going to be, at the times is even now, where you can't even stand up for what's in God's law already, or you're going to be criticized. You can't say what marriage really is out loud because the law says something different. 
and then you're going to be talk hateful speech, you're going to be banned from Facebook. You're going to be banned. You're going to be on the list. And you think that's bad. Time's going to get worse when if you say you're a Christian, you're going to be killed. My, my, my. But, but, but God is saying, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the people that scorn you, people that talk about you, people that say things about you, people that hurt your feelings. Don't be afraid of them. Why, God? He says, for the more the moths will devour them as it devours cloth, clothing. He says, the worms will eat at them as it eat wool. He says, they're going to be gone. All they said, they're going to be dead and gone. But my righteousness, but my salvation, those that have that will last forever. My righteousness will continue from generation to generation. There's no end to my salvation. And so God is encouraging not only the Babylonians back then, but he's encouraging us that we got to stand for what God says. And, 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 and don't worry, you're going to get talked about, you're going to be scarred, you're going to be put on a blacklist, you might even get killed. Like we were talking about the, man, the girl in uh, Calabar, when the gunman came up to her, do you believe in Jesus? And he, she said yes, and he shot her. Now, if me and you were there, you had two choices, you could say yes or no. You could have got shot with no two, but you might have had a chance to live, maybe, <laughs> maybe. You know, you can say, yeah, I don't believe in God. But could we have stood for the right thing and confessed our faith, even if it meant death? And you wouldn't know until it happened to you. But God says if you lose your life for his sake, you will gain your life. So that's why it's so important that we know the word of God, because times are coming when we going to be in the situation like the Babylonians where you ain't going to be able to say what's right. You ain't going to be able to stand up on God's side. Like we were talking earlier, the abortion problem. That's God's, that's man's law. But God's law says that you shouldn't even have sex till you're married. So if you obey God's laws, we wouldn't be having a situation with abortion, right? And, and, but what happens is when man makes law and he violates God's law, he's got to make another law to fix that law. So, so there's going to be a time where there is going to be God's law, which is right and righteous, and, and, and it will stand forever. So while we're down here on this earth, we got, we're going to be going through all this kind of stuff. We're going to see this world get worse and worse. But those who seek after God, the hope Isaiah has been writing, I don't know how many centuries ago, way before Christ came, he's writing the hope for us to have hope, to still stand on the word of God, to, stay up, to still do what is right, to still seek after God. Okay, I'm way past my time. <laughs> Uh, I think, oh, okay, good. That's the end of that. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that when you're reading these Old Testaments and the prophets, they're talking, some of them talk about what's immediately happening, and some even talk further. So the Word of God speaks to all of us at any time. When we read about Adam and Eve, we can, God is still speaking to us. When he's talking about creation, although he did that way back, he's still speaking to us. So I encourage you that when you read God's word, you pray, and you look to see what God is speaking to you. Okay. Amen. Amen. If you have any questions, write them down. I'll, <laughs> I'll get back with you next week. So I think I'll be thanking you once again for uh, another uh, uh, time you've given us to study your word. We thank you, O oh God, for those that came out to say, we ask now, Lord, Father, that you, you, keep, you, you, you teach us uh, uh, how to hear you, how to hear you, Father, and, and especially how to be obedient to your word, Father. Uh, we face all kinds of uh, obstacles in our way, but Father, as we know and you say, 
You are God and all things are possible. We lean, we trust in you, Father. Our faith is in you. Upon that solid rock we stand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And those that have their soap, uh, I'll close the Sunday school. You can read your next thing. Uh, get your uh, get your uh, chapter.